Guys, welcome back. Recently on the internet, I've seen these lights popping up for between 130 and 200 pounds per light, which to me, I just think is ridiculous because they're so easy to make. When I deconstructed this light and realized how it was made, I reckon I can show you how to make these for under 30 pounds. So in this video, I'm gonna show you exactly how to construct this, where to buy the parts, and how to program it. Easy peasy. So these are the parts that you'll need to control this. Now these are not regular LED lights as you may think. These are called addressable LED lights. And how they work is there is a microchip in every single LED. And what that enables you to do is if you have a smart controller, you can tell each light what color to turn and when. This particular LED strip is called a WS2812B. So when you're looking for them online, that's what you need. There are 60 LEDs per meter, and we'll only be using one meter of this. There are five meters on this roll. You can pick these up for 15 quid for five meters. And if you buy the LED extrusion that we have here, you could effectively make five lights from one strip. Now this here, also found on Amazon, is what's called a corner LED extrusion. What we're gonna use this for is to stand upright. Now for speed, I bought these on Amazon Prime, next day delivery, and you can only buy one meter sections that I could find next day. The other thing we need is this controller here. Now this smart controller is called an SP110E. That one here can be controlled from your smartphone, but if you wanted to further improve on the project that we're doing here, you can also buy smaller ones that will fit inside the legs of this light. So for the purpose of this video, this is one we'll use. The only other thing we needed was a five volt transformer with a plug so it can go in the end of our controller. And then we've got these. Now these are just bits of aluminum pipe or box section, sorry, that we had in the workshop. And those are gonna sit like this. So the LED extrusion is gonna stand upright. We're gonna bolt these solid aluminum bars onto the corners here. And then these box section here will slip onto the bar and then they will become the feet. So now I'm gonna fit these to here. I'll fit the legs on and then we'll paint or powder coat the whole thing black and then we're ready for electronics. It is so simple. You guys can make this at home in under half an hour. Let's do it. So the next step is if you look at this extrusion here, you can see that we have this bit here. Now we need to cut that out because if we want to mount these brackets on the side of here, we won't get in for a screw. So what we're gonna do with the Dremel is we're gonna cut a section out here like this and then we'll buff this bit flat and this will give us two flat sections for bolting these brackets on here. So I'll put my glasses on, we'll cut it out and we'll move on to the next step. So, now that we've cut this away in the Dremel, you can see we've got a nice flat section here for bolting this onto this. Don't worry too much if you're a bit brutal with your Dremel or your file or whatever it is that you're using because there's a diffuser that goes on here that will hide what you've done. We've just made a small line here so that we can see exactly where the bracket sits and we've made a mark on the center point of that. Now those center points are where we're gonna drill through and then we need to do the same on the bracket and run a tap through it so that when we put the bolt from the inside, we can bolt the brackets onto the upright. So that's what we're gonna do next. I never measured these holes exactly, just because the bits of aluminium that we had in the workshop were not exactly the size of the inside here. So what we done was we buffed them down with a grinder just to make them fit. You could shop around online and find one that fits exactly inside the box section that you have. Just bear in mind, you don't want your box section to really be too much wider than your upright or it won't look right. But because we've just drilled that randomly, I will just hold it in place and I'll touch the hole with a Sharpie and then I'll get my center point for here which then I just need to drill through. All I'm going to do is just take a small file and just tidy these holes up a bit inside and out just to make our life easier when we're fitting it back together. I'm just going to take my sharpie now 
I'm going to mark my center point on this aluminium. And as you can see now, we've got the center point on there. And then we'll just do the same with the other side now. Is this is what's called a drill tap. Now the bolts I have here are an M4 bolt. If you want to be precise, it's called a machine screw. All I'm going to do is run this drill tap into this aluminium, which will then create a thread inside it so that when I screw this in, it'll hold it all together. Now, that's these holes drilled and tapped. We've put them on an M4 thread for our M4 drill screw. What I'll do now is I'll assemble them, I'll bolt them on here, and then I'll show you once it's finished. Now that that's done, we'll check it. As you can see, it slips over. When I put the other one on here now, and we stand it upright, we will have our legs. So one here, one here, and that's it. Our frame is made. So the only other thing that I need to do on this is we're gonna drill two holes, one here, one here, we're going to drill them and tap them so that we can put two grub screws. A grub screw is one of these little things here. It's just a very small screw that when we tighten it in here, it's going to grip the bar that goes inside. So we'll put them in and that will fix this leg to that bar that we've made there. And then we can stand it all upright and we're ready for paint. So, happy days guys. Now we've drilled and tapped this. We've put in our M5 grub screws. Now just remember, if you don't have M5 grub screws or you can't get them, you don't need to use M5. You can use M3, M4, M5, M6, whatever you have. Just drill and tap the appropriate hole and slide them in. So now just remember, if you have the grub screws to the top, it doesn't look so nice. The same as if you have them at that side. If you have them to the inside, they're less noticeable and definitely don't point them down because as you can see, it'll make your light wonky. So we'll turn them to the inside. We'll slide in our upright and I'll turn it over and show you how they work. So now, when you tighten these screws, because this is threaded and the bar is not, they push against one another. So when you tighten them in like this, this now takes a hold. And when I stand it upright, your leg is now fixed on. At this stage, you would just do exactly the same to this leg and now you're ready for paint. I would just apply a coat of primer and then a coat of any color of paint that you want and your light is now ready for the electronics. But in true Blue Peter fashion, we've already done one. Now this one that we've done, we powder coated it just because we had the powder coat oven in the workshop. At home, it's perfectly fine to paint it, but this is the final product that you will have when you put all your grub screws in and you fix in your upright. All we need to do now is put in the electronics. Now, the original lighting system that the guys bought had a controller inside the leg. You can buy them off Amazon, they fit inside, but you have so many modifications you'll need to do to this. I don't think it's worth it. All we need to do is buy this controller, we'll mount it on the leg. Now, as you can see, where there's no way of us for getting the wires into the, into the upright. So what we'll do is we'll just take a little bit of material out of here with the Dremel so that we can slide the cables inside. And those cables will come up. They're a bit long, we'll cut them smaller so that we can directly solder them straight onto the strip. And we'll desolder these, we don't need them anymore. So we'll get rid of that, we'll solder these wires on, and then that's us, we're ready to go. This particular strip is the three wire version. It doesn't need the clock. So that green wire there, we don't need it. We can snip it off, we don't need it at all. I'll double-sided tape that onto there. We'll solder the wires onto that and we'll stick them on and you're ready to test your light. It's honestly as simple as that, guys. So let's get ahead and carve this out. As you can see now, we've carved a little hole in here. These profiles are really strong. You won't interrupt the integrity of it too much. But as you can see, when I take this controller now, we can slide it in. The controller is nice and flush at this side so it doesn't interrupt it too much. And we just fold the wires up. So all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut the wires here, like so. And then I'm gonna solder these wires directly to that strip. 
Now it's far easier to solder it on the bench here, then apply the strip, than it is to try and stick it together and do it. Once we've soldered it on, this has already got an adhesive backing on it. When I pull that off and stick that on, it'll stick forever, it'll never come off. All we need is a little piece of adhesive here to hold the controller on the back, and that's us. So what I've done is I've peeled a little bit of adhesive off the back. It's just a little tip that I do, and then it allows me to stick the strip to wherever I'm working so that when I solder it, it doesn't move. Now, all I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna solder the contacts so that when I want, I'll put a little bit of solder on here as well, and it just makes it stick so much easier. We've soldered our controller onto our strip, and all we need to do now is work out how long we need to have the strip. Now obviously there's five meters on here. You can only cut the strips where the copper contacts are. Some LED strips you buy, you can only cut them every three. The ones that we've bought, the WS2812Bs, you can cut them every single pixel or light. So I'm gonna hold it. I'm roughly gonna look at how much I need. And then from then, I'll cut it with the scissors. So now I'm gonna put it all together. I've got a couple of pieces of double-sided tape here that I'd already cut. We'll just apply them to the base here. I'm not gonna stick them or pull it off yet and stick them on yet, just because I need to make sure the strip reaches right to the top. So we'll pull it through, we'll peel off the tape on the strip, and then we'll stick the strip on in the inside of the profile. Now you can't really get this wrong because there's only one way it can stick. And we're just gonna keep going until we get to the very top. So now, as you can see, our LEDs are stuck in the profile. All we need to do is press it a bit tight and then pull off a double-sided and stick that on there. Now, we have completely stuck the strip down. As you can see, our wires are coming through the hole that we've made and the controller's stuck on and it's quite strong. It's not too invasive. If you wanted, you can paint this black, but just remember it's got a QR code on there. And what you need to do is scan that code with your phone to get the app to control these lights. All we need to do now is apply the diffuser to the front, plug it in, and the rest of it is on your smartphone, which I'll show you how to do now. Right, this is the diffuser. As you can see, it's got plastic film on it. You don't need that. That's just to protect it from getting scratched. So we'll pull that off, we'll chuck it. All this does is it clips in to this profile and it diffuses a light. If you don't have this, you'll see each individual pixel. This, when the pixels hit the light from the inside, it diffuses it and it gives you a nice smooth light. It's a bit of a nightmare to get in in the beginning, but once you get it in at the start, if you hold your thumbs and just run them up, you will push it in. And there you have it. So that there is your completed light with your diffusers, everything in. All we need to do now is take your five volt power pack from earlier, plug it into a power source, and we're ready to program. So now you can see the lights are moving, they're doing what they're meant to be doing. And if I show you this one side by side with the one that the guys had, they're much and such the same. They move in the same patterns, they do the same thing. They're effectively the same light. But what I need to show you how to do now is how to program it because your controller doesn't know how many lights there are on this. Now, if the controller was programmed for say 500 lights and you only had 100 on here, it doesn't matter because the excess lights would effectively just shoot past where you finish. If you have it set to 50 lights, but you have 60, only two thirds of this would light up. So what you would need to do is count how many LEDs you have and then tell that to the software on the app. This is, this particular lights that we have are 60 LEDs per meter, and we know that we have exactly one meter of profile. So we'll, we'll estimate it on 60 LEDs. So now you can see it's taken us to the application for these lights. So we'll open it. Now, it comes up searching for devices. 
What we need to do is we pull down and it will refresh and we look for the controller that we have, which is the SP110E. So we click on the SP110E and we'll tell it the total number of pixels in this string is 65. We know it's only 60, but we'll say 65 and give ourselves a little bit extra. Now, if I show you on my phone, if I select a color, it will change. Blue, green, yellow, pink, or we can do a sequence and that's it. Everything can be adjusted in this app. And that's it guys, that's how you make a 120 to 200 pound light at home for under 30 quid. And in my opinion, I think our light is better. It has more functions. It has 120 different styles of lighting and it can control it off your phone. Perfect, job done. So guys, as you can see, we're now finished. There's the completed light that we made and there's the purchased one. Absolutely no difference at all. If you enjoyed our video, please hit the like button. Remember to subscribe. And if you want to be one of the first people to see our latest release, hit the bell notification. We're also looking for inspiration for new videos. So if there's something that you'd like to see us make, please leave a comment below and we'll jump on it. Thank you for watching. I'll see you soon. I nearly forgot. Last week, we done a competition to win a custom charcuterie board for you. The guys in the media team picked a name at random and that name was Beata Tetkovska. If you can send us a message on our social media, we'll get you in. You can sit in the podcast room with me and we'll make a, we'll make a design together and I'll manufacture that board for you.